So the idea of putting an RFID reader everywhere, so that when you have this card or these chips or whatever it is, they can track you. Now, their biggest problem was how do I get people to carry the cards? How do we get the RFID tags on them? You see this over and over. Virtually every document we read about tracking with RFID was how do you get the darn cards in the people? How do we get them to carry the cards? And Homeland Security has conveniently resolved that right now with these uh, credit cards, or excuse me, with the, well, Visa's resolved it with the credit cards. Homeland Security is resolving it with the driver's licenses. Where do they want to put them? Everywhere. Shopping malls, airports, train stations, bus stations, elevators, trains, airplanes, restrooms, sports arenas, libraries, theaters, museums, in other words, everywhere. There would be one at the entrance of this facility as you walked in, no question about it. And what that would mean as you walk through the doorway with your credit card, with your ID card, with your national ID card, you would be scanned and they'd know everybody in the room. You can put these readers into doorways, you can put in floorways, excuse me, floors and ceilings. Uh, wide open spaces, they've realized that instead of putting you through a narrow doorway that you realize you're walking through, they can just sandwich you. They just put one in the floor and one in the ceiling, and you just walk through it that way. You scan you top to bottom. They can put them in carpets. They can put them outdoors and use them to film people. Whenever I talk about this, um, when I'm doing testimony, the lobbyists for the industry always go, that's ridiculous, it's impossible to track people outdoors with RFID. And whenever they say that, I always point to this organization or this uh, amusement park in England called Alton Towers. And what they do when you get there, they give you a wristband with RFID in it so you can conveniently use the, you know, the pay phone and all that other stuff. So you get the little RFID there. And as you walk around the park, you go on the water slide, you eat a hot dog. Every place you pass by, they've hidden these surveillance cameras and RFID readers. So your little wristband triggers the surveillance camera to shoot, oh, 15, 30 seconds of video of you walking by, whether you got your, you know, arm in arm with your husband or yelling at your kids, whatever you're doing, they film you. And at the end of the day, when you go to leave the park, you walk by this exit desk and there's a lady sitting there smiling and she's got a screen behind her. And as the screen picks up your wristband, it starts showing all of the clips of your day and all the things that you did and all the places that you went. And she says, you can buy a keepsake DVD of this for just 20 pounds British sterling. And people actually sign up for it, it's crazy stuff. So they can do that anywhere and you don't need the keepsake DVD, you can just hand that directly to Homeland Security or to the FBI or anybody else. This is a little futuristic but it creeps me out. There's a company called N Ocean, E-N Ocean, and they make readers that you can put in the woods and they don't require any power because they're powered, get this, by the vibrations of the wind and the leaves of the trees. And they work as RFID readers. So if you've got a chip in you and you walk through the woods and these things are in the trees, boom, the trees are watching you. It's like something out of Wizard of Oz, you know, those grabby trees. They've got the technology to do it. All right. How close are we to this happening? Let me tell you this, it's happening all over the world right now. China last year was the biggest RFID market on the globe. Not for product tagging, which is where they thought the market would be, but for human tagging. They issued over one billion RFID tags into nationally mandated forced at gunpoint in tanks, and you know China's got those. They force people to carry these remotely readable RFID tags that state your reproductive history, health history, you name it readable from a distance by communist government authorities. In fact, if this were a communist gathering in this room right now, in communist China, I bet you there would probably be some government officials and all they'd have to do would be walk that way, that way, that way, and that way, and they would scan every single person in the room and know everything about you. Done deal, it's done. Not proposed, it's done. Who put it in place? Our companies, IBM. Dell, Cisco, Hewlett Packard, American companies. And in fact, when they were done doing that in China, they were wringing their hands. And I know because I subscribed to all these publications that uh, the RFID industry reads and, you know, they were bemoaning the fact that their huge contract was over. And they said, what are we going to do? We already made all our money. How are we going to make money next year? Well, I'll tell you the answer. They figured it out. Whoops. Where's my other slide? I guess I'm missing my slide. Mexico. Mexico is going to be issuing ID cards, national ID cards to all of its citizens. India 
is going to be issuing 1.2 billion national ID cards to all of its citizens. Romania is issuing a national ID card to all of its citizens. You go down through the list and they're getting all the third world countries with hundreds of millions and billions of people in them. People who don't even have running water and they're being issued high tech identity documents and all of their information is being placed into these enormous national databases. This is all part of a global system. Joan Vion is going to be speaking. And uh, I really value Joan's work. It dovetails very well with mine because Joan talks about the UN agreements that bring all this stuff together. All these ID cards, they're working towards the global ID. They're working towards a system where all these ID cards will be intercompatible and there will be one single global database for everybody on Earth. You know the census, how they're doing GPS readings on the front doors of everybody's houses and we were all freaking out about that? All right, that's part of a UN program a UN program to get the GPS coordinates of every human dwelling on Earth, every hut in Africa, every igloo in Alaska, if they even still have them, every single dwelling on Earth, UN-based. They do it through our census, so we think it's American, but it's global. It's all coming together. The beast is nipping at our heels, guys. All right, so you can do this in India. You can do this in China, because people can't really speak out in those countries. Um, the government has almost complete control over the, the population of those countries. How are they going to sell it in the U.S.? Well, they're doing a pretty good job so far by just scaring everybody to death. 9-11, terrorists, immigrants, illegal immigrants, taking your jobs. You know, Juan there mowing your lawn is, uh, is, is the biggest threat we face today. So we've got to put a national ID card in everybody's pocket. And we've got to scan everybody who wants to mow a lawn. And we've got to do biometrics to get a job. This is what they're going to use. And the arguments are going to be pretty powerful. You know, the Bible tells us that the powers of the beast are going to be incredible. People are going to think they're living in a time of peace and prosperity, but it's going to be under an iron fist and under the thumb of a global government that does not care about your individual rights. But you will be safe. I'll tell you, when you lived, uh, if you lived in the most surveilled society on earth, which would be the Soviet Union under Stalin, there probably weren't a lot of random muggings and rapes. There probably weren't a lot of abductions. I bet you people were behaving themselves pretty good. Was that a good society to live in? I'll tell you something, that was the most deadly society in human history. Stalin killed over 60 million of his own people. So yeah, we can stop petty crime. We can stop identity theft. We can put a camera in everybody's home. Did you guys hear the news this week that England is actually installing surveillance cameras in people's houses to watch whether they're raising their children right, putting them in bed on time, feeding them the right nutritious meals, and speaking to them nicely? For real, I'm not making this up. Five years ago, I would have heard somebody on a stage and go, get out of here. For real. And they're spending billions of dollars to do it. So yeah, I can make sure that you don't abuse your kid. I can make sure your kid's in bed every night by 8 o'clock. I can make sure your husband's not surfing the net looking at stuff he doesn't want to. You can make sure of a lot of things. But there's something that always, always historically goes hand in hand with that kind of control. And it is murder every time. I've got a bookshelf. Now I have almost two. Four feet wide, probably seven feet tall. Lining. I've got 6,000 books in my house. But two of those bookshelves are all 20th century history. And I'll tell you, the most deadly regimes on earth are regimes where people gave them too much power. And they gained the power because they scared the people and they said, that enemy over there, give me all the power and I'll protect you from him. And then they turned around when they had all the power and they just murdered everybody. The most deadly force on planet earth is government. Think about that for a minute. Second only, second only to natural causes and disease. But no terrorist, no war. Uh, 20th century, R.J. Rummel's research People's own governments were six times more deadly than all of the wars combined. Government killed six times more people than World War I, World War II, Korean War, Vietnam War, you name every war on earth. Government killed more people. That's why you don't want to give your government this kind of power. 